Derek, uh, I'll start with the news uh, that, that came through yesterday from the club uh, that you have uh, parted company with recruitment director Lee Turnbull. Why was it that that decision was made? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously straightforward. We, we obviously said in the statement um, what is going to happen and uh, I'll be able to update you the first week in October. It, it just said in the statement as well from Ryan that you obviously part on, on good terms. Do you, as the manager, echo that sentiment? Listen, I've already, you know, stated, you know, there was a statement went out yesterday and um, from my point of view, uh, going forward, uh, I'll explain what's going to happen the first week in October. Um, team news-wise then, um, have you got any fresh injury concerns going into to Saturday? No, we've got um, everyone uh, fit uh, and raring to go, the only exceptions are the three uh, long-term absentees in Niall Canavan. Leon Gall and Abel Issa. I realise you were asked about the nature of Canavan's injury um, on, on Saturday, mm. um, but just how unfortunate is that for you as a side to, to not only lose a, a leading voice in your back line, but also your captain as well? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you want everyone to be fit. You know, we want Angol Issa and Canavan to be fit, but uh, unfortunately, you know, he's picked up uh, a slight injury that uh, is going to keep him out uh, for a few weeks. It's one that he's had before and uh, uh, it's, it's come about again. All muscular injuries, the, the three that are out now, I think was Levi's a muscular injury as well previously? No. Was it not? Okay. No. So just the three at the moment. Is, is that just bad luck uh, from your well, part? Well, as I've said before, um, you know, Leon Gall has a history, yeah. Neil Canavan has a history, and uh, Abo doesn't, so uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, looking back on Saturday's uh, defeat and, and obviously the, the point that comes up about the missed chances again, I mean, I feel like it's groundhog day probably... You feel the same as well. Speaking about bad luck, is that what you afford it to, or, or is there more to it when you when you reflect? No, it's not. It, it's um, either good defending from Salford, good goalkeeping, or we miss the chances, and uh, it's as simple as that. Um, we've created e enough chances to win the football match, and uh, for one reason or another, of the three, um, we haven't uh, been able to take the chances. Does it require from you a, a degree of, of patience in your own belief that those chances will be put away in, in time to come? Well, as I said, good goalkeeping, block shots, and uh, players not uh, you know finding the back of the net. It's uh, the nature of football. I say that patience just from a maybe fans' perspective as well as us in the media as well. Do we, do we need to be patient? No, I think that we've got to score goals. Uh, you know, we've got to. We're creating, you know, more than enough chances to, to win the game. But uh, as I said, you know, good goalkeeping, block shots and uh, poor finishing uh, hasn't uh, enabled us to get that goals. Do you feel that you've got enough goal scorers within your squad? Time will tell. Um, it's a long season and uh, I think that uh, we've got uh, enough opportunities uh, on goal. We're creating enough chances and... Uh, Eventually, uh, you know, the ball will find the back of the net. Still, though, there were chances that were created, as you say. You're always learning about this squad that you said to us previously. Do, do you see, even though there's disappointment in, in defeat, do, do you see that this squad come back from that rather quickly? Well, it's a game that we dominated against uh, Salford, uh, a game that we created uh, more chances than Salford in big moments in the game. We didn't take them. Uh, at that opportunity and uh, a game that uh, we feel that we should have won. Looking ahead to Barrow, um, how, how do you view them as, as opposition? Are they an improved outfit from, from what they were last season? Well, they did exceptionally well at the end of last season. I, th I think that uh, to go on the run that they did to keep themselves in the, the Football League uh, was phenomenal. And uh, I think that you know going forward, uh, they've got a new manager in uh, this season. But uh, you know, last season they put in a magnificent effort. They have changed personnel, like all teams do in this division, uh, and have slightly uh, played in a different way uh, to last season. What do you make to the the recruitment that they've achieved in the summer as well? They brought a fair few players in. Yeah, I mean, all clubs do the same. You know, it's. Uh, when you're lower down League One and League Two, you always change players uh, around a bit, and uh, that's what Barrow have done. You know, they've taken in uh, some free agents uh, to give them the opportunity uh, of being better than last season. I wanted to ask you about it from a uh, Gareth Evans, who we've spoken to um, today. He started the last two games in, in the midfield region, the number eight, as he calls it. Um, what, what qualities do you see him in? Uh, do, see, do you see in him at the moment? Well, 
Gareth Evans is a you know a very good football player. Um, he sees a pass, he runs forward, he gets into the box, and he can co- score goals. He's shown that to, when he was at, uh, at Portsmouth, and uh, he is one that um, you know we hope that uh, you know can score more goals for us. Uh, the same with you know Callum Cook uh, needs to score more goals. Uh, Vernon needs to score more goals. Vernon is. Is probably the best player for us at this moment in time in scoring goals and creating assists. Gilly Head hasn't made a, a goal yet or, or scored a goal, but uh, you know that will come because he's getting himself into areas. And uh, the strikers, uh, you know, have to score goals when they come along. Yeah, and, and for that striking trio that you that you have at the moment, what of Keelan Lavery and, and Theo Robinson? How much responsibility is on their shoulders as well to provide those goals, not just Andy Cook? Yeah, I mean they are, you know, pushing to to be in that to start in eleven. Uh, obviously, Lavery is ahead of uh, Theo at this moment in time, but uh, they are, you know, pushing to get in there. And, and just going back to that that word patience and and um, patience in belief of the ability, but also patience within the, the formation, the tactics, the the approach as well, to to not maybe have a knee jerk reaction when things aren't going the way that you might want them to. Well, the only thing that hasn't been going for us is scoring goals and. Uh, as a football manager, you look at uh, formation and tactics and uh, set up your team that uh, is going to create more chances than the opposition. And uh, we've done that in, in every game this season except one in the league. And uh, that shows you you know, the attacking force that uh, we are. And uh, we have just unfortunately not been able to you know, find the back of the net. Thank you, Derek. Cheers. When you talk about Lavery and, and Robinson, how far are they from full fitness from being available for 90 minutes? Yeah, well, they haven't played a, a full 90 minutes yet, and uh, so they're behind the, the rest of the squad. Um, but they are uh, getting sharper as, as the training weeks go on, and uh, they're getting closer to uh, being able to get more minutes in them. Uh, how do you make that? Is it with consultation with the backroom staff about when they are ready to... To start again. No, it's 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 on my head now. Uh, you know, it's uh, they're ready to to go, and uh, you know, it's when I decide uh, when it's ready to go. Cheers. Uh, obviously, Derek, you were saying about you know we were talking about patience there. I mean, Barrow, Mark Cooper went as one at Valley Pride a few times previously with Forest Green and Swindon. Basically, we're playing the old game of frustrating, getting the crowd a bit frustrated, <laughs> slowing things down, and you know, playing the game. And, and it's a tactic that, I'm not saying they'll do it this weekend, but it's a tactic that's probably going to, you're going to come up against quite a bit this season, I thought, try to almost use that, that crowd against you a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, Barrow have changed this year. They're, they're more open. Uh, they've gone for it uh, in games early in the campaign. And uh, I think that uh, we'll see on Saturday that uh, I would think that uh, they'll continue that uh, by, you know, coming on to us and uh, you know trying to uh, push us back and then it's up to us to find the space that they create. Do you also see that potentially you know with a big crowd the opposition will try and use that as a you know try and get get the crowd a little bit edgy or a bit, bit twitchy and try and see if that transfers on the pitch a little bit? Yeah I mean I think that um, that could be the case but you know I think from a, an opposition's manager's point of view you want to come up and you know, have a go at uh, the opposition. I think that Mark uh, has set his team up, you know, for that this season. And obviously, talking about the recruitment, um, Franny Zanzala was a player that you know Bradford certainly looked at, and um, they had a few comments to say when when he signed over there. And I know Ryan Sparks sort of said it was flattering that Bradford City's name should be mentioned. I mean, what was your sort of view on the, the, what they were saying? Well, never in my time did I look at them, so uh, it was before my time that uh, they did that. And, and the fact that they've thrown a team club's name into the, into the picture like they did. I don't know anything about it. It must have been before my time. Uh, we were n- never in my time. And obviously, in terms of, of this weekend, you know, uh, 1.3 games, you deserve a lot more. Is it a case of, with the team, when you're talking to the team, just sort of reminding them of the performances and perhaps sort of almost taking the results out of it in a sense? Yeah, I mean, we've analysed the games and, uh, you know, we could be sitting here um, with probably six points uh, rather than the, the one point. Um, the only poor performance we've had is uh, at Leighton Orient and uh, the rest of the performances have been very good. Has it been a long week since Salford in terms of wanting to get it that, out of the system a little bit? I don't think uh, any week's a long week. It's still seven days a week and uh, nothing changes. <laughs> and, and, and generally the mood within the, 
camp seemed pretty positive considering, you know, it's, as you say, you've not got what you've probably earned in the last couple of days. Listen, it's football results and uh, we have created enough opportunities to win uh, football matches, unfortunately. Um, we haven't taken the opportunities. It's as easy as that. And uh, there's nothing more than that we can say. We need to take the, the chances when they come along. We've created you know, loads of chances in the game and good ones at that. And even the ones that get blocked don't go down as chances. And uh, I think that uh, you know, we've created some really good openings in the games. And obviously, you talked about um, Robinson and, and Keelan Lavery. Uh, again, without some going too far ahead, you've got a... John, uh, Papa John's going next weekend, next week. Is that possibly an opportunity for them to get a few more minutes into under the belts? Yeah, if they're not in on Saturday, then um, there's a possibility at that. But, uh, you know, they could uh, well be in on Saturday. I suppose the absence of a reserve league is when, this, when you probably do with it in that little bit. Yeah, I don't like playing in the reserve league. Uh, I never have done. Uh, I would rather, you know, have friendly matches uh, more than have... Uh, the reserve league, uh, but I think that uh, you want competitive football.